it will give you a deep insight into the python list and numpy array it will also give you an edge over the others that you know the real difference that why we are using the numpy array in memory here we are storing the addresses like the address of 1 will be stored here the address of 2 will be stored here the address of 3 will be stored here the address of 4 will be stored here correct on those we are applying mathematical operations so it becomes really really crucial to optimize all the thing and we cannot do that that with the python list if you are going with the python list then you will be losing all your money good morning friends this is a beautiful sunday morning in singapore and with that let's start one of the most important topic and python that is the difference between python list and numpy arrays because if you understand this topic it will give you a deep insight into the python list and numpy array it will also give you an edge over the others that you know the real difference that why we are using the numpy array why there was a need of numpy array and why we are using numpy arrays in the algo trading not the python list so often for the large data sets right so please focus for just 15 minutes and i'll make sure that you have a complete crystal clear idea of why we are using numpy arrays and that will really make difference in your understanding of the code so with that being said let's get started for the day 21 of the 100 days of hell with the python algo trading so the first difference is the data type consistency why because we know that the python list can store elements of different data types right this flexibility is useful for certain applications but it comes at the cost of performance and memory efficiency we know that python list have a flexibility that it can store different type of data types in a list but that comes at the cost of the performance and the memory efficiency right again in algo trading you might end up with list containing mixed data types which can lead to unexpected behavior or errors during numerical operations because in algo trading we have large data sets and inside that if we have different kind of data types then sometime it might behave unexpectedly and it might throw error and which can lead to so many losses right you know that so let's say we have a list which contains all the integers but somehow there is a string between that and it can cause the error correct now let's check for the numpy array so numpy array require all elements to be of the same data type because numpy forces that all the elements should be of same data type because of that it already knows that it is consisting only single data type and it no need to worry that it might throw an error right so this restriction enables numpy to perform operations more efficiently because it knows the exact type of each element and can optimized c based operation this is very important because we know that numpy array was created in the c so it can optimized using the c based operations because we know that c is significantly faster than the python so it is using that particular advantage of c over the python list and this is crucial in algo trading where performance is the key we know that in algo trading performance is the key we need to optimize everything we need to optimize the code we need to optimize the servers we need to optimize the network we need to optimize the databases and everything should be optimized to get the best performance of any trading system right so integers and here you can see that we have a numpy array which consists all the data types of same and it gives us a performance advantage over the python list the next is the performance python list are slower for large scale numerical operations because each element can be of any type right and the list itself doesn't support vectorized operations this means that numerical operations often require explicit loops which are slower in python because we know that python list can have any data type like if we have a data from let's say a price data of the 7 years of any stock let's say the price data for the apple from 2010 to 2024 and it is 14 years and it becomes a large data sets and when if we are using python list we know that it will be slower why because it might consisting of different data types or because it is also storing the information of the data type of each element and also the reference the address of that particular element so it is definitely slower than the numpy array i'll show you all these examples in the program don't worry for now just focus on the theory that's important your concept should be very clear so you can see that we are creating a list comprehension here and now we are calculating the time the start time and the here the end time and between that we are applying a loop because in list we have to apply the loops so what we are doing we are applying on the 1 million random data 
and we are multiplying that with the 1.01 so for that operation we have to use the loop and loops are always slower we have already studied that right we always want to avoid the loops and when it comes to the numpy array numpy arrays are designed for numerical operations and support vectorized operation because we know that numpy arrays are specially designed in c language and that is significantly faster and numpy arrays can also support the vectorized operations what is the meaning of vectorized operation here we need to use the loops in python list but here what it can do it can directly create an array with any random data sets right and after that it can multiply in vectorized operation that means i'll just show you after this topic the broadcasting in that you will understand that how vectorized operation works but for now you just understand that it can directly multiply this 1.01 to all the elements of this numpy array directly right so it is become significantly faster than the python list we'll just implement this program in the code also just wait for a few minutes first let's complete the theory okay so the first we have seen data type consistency second is performance third is memory efficiency as we already know that the elements of the python list are stored scatteredly in memory right so first the elements are stored and then the python list is consisting of the address of those elements from the memory and also the information of that which type of data the element is so means it is storing three things the address of the element or the reference we can say and again the information of the data type of that element but in numpy array python already knows that it is consisting of one data type it can be anything so it doesn't need to store the data type information for every element it can just store for only one variable or you can say one numpy array right again it is directly storing the element into the numpy array unlike in the python list it is storing the reference of that element right so it becomes significantly less memory consuming i think you are able to get my point and this particular concept of list we have already studied in the list so you can just refer you can see the i button here and click on that and you can refer that for detailed information on the list element storage correct so when we read this list uses more memory because they store type information the first and pointers and we can say the reference or the address of for each element right this overhead can add up quickly with large data sets making them less memory efficient for algorithmic trading data because in algo trading we have a large amount of data and it becomes really really crucial that we are optimizing the memory and in that context python lists are consuming more memory we'll just check this program in the coding just wait now let's read for the numpy array numpy arrays are more memory efficient because they store elements in the contiguous block of memory we know that the arrays are stored in the contiguous block of memory correct let's say we have 1 2 3 4 these all elements are directly stored in the array but in python list what happens let's say we have a python list and let's say the list have like 1 2 3 4 so what will happen now one is stored somewhere two is stored somewhere in the memory again three is stored somewhere and four at some other places these are stored scattered in the memory so that place will have a memory address let's say 0xb2 and it is 0xc3 that is let's say 0x and d4 it might be 0xe5 right now what will happen in memory here we are storing the addresses like the address of 1 will be stored here the address of 2 will be stored here the address of 3 will be stored here the address of 4 will be stored here correct then it will also storing the type information that whether this one is integer string or what so it becomes more memory consuming the list i hope it's very clear now right now let's move to the next part and which is mathematical operations please make sure that you are having a good understanding of these concepts just repeat the videos again if you don't get in one time but at least have everything in your mind make a mind map and it will definitely help you while you will perform the core algo trading after the libraries right so performing mathematical operations on python list requires explicit loops or list comprehensions which are less efficient and more verbose why and let's say we have a list of these elements and if you want to check the daily gains so we have to first apply a list comprehension here correct and then it will find the difference and after that it will divide by the the price of that day so it is using a list comprehension and it is kind of a loop and definitely it will be slower we know that already right but in numpy array 
NumPy arrays support vectorized operations, making mathematical computations concise and much faster. This is particularly useful in trading algorithms where you need to perform complex calculations on large data sets. Because in algo trading, sometimes we need to apply so many strategies, so many different formulas, and we also have a large data set, right? It might be 10 years, 20 years, or it might be a one minute frame, five minute frame, 15 minute frame. So it becomes a large data sets. And on those, we are applying mathematical operations. So it becomes really, really crucial to optimize all the thing. And we cannot do that, that with the Python list. If you are going with the Python list, then you will be losing all your money to the others who are using the NumPy arrays. So you can see that in NumPy array, we have one function, one single line code, np.difference. So it will calculate the difference by applying vectorized operation. Vectorized means, okay, just wait for now. I just, in the next topic, I'll explain you what is vectorized. And if you remember, I have explained you in the previous video also, but don't worry, I'll explain you again after this, okay? Vectorized means it first converts any element to a vector. And after that, it is applying the element to element, right? Let's say the first element of the first array and the first element of the second array, it will multiply directly. No need to apply the loops and anything. So it becomes way faster, right? So yeah, in NumPy, we have function for almost every mathematical operations. You don't need to write any code. With the just help of one single line, you can perform many complex mathematical operations. Yeah, let's move to the next point. Okay, next we have the built-in functions and operations. So in Python list, let's say we want to calculate the mean with the help of Python list. So for that, first we need to calculate the sum of the list and then we need to calculate the length, right? So we are using the external functions. Then we need to divide that with the sum over the length. So it will take definitely more time and more storage. But in NumPy array, we have one simple function that is np.mean. And with the help of that, we can directly find the mean of any large amount of data set. Now, the last but not the least, we have multidimensional data, right? So, so storing and manipulating multidimensional data, example, OHLC, OHLC stands for open, high, low, close. We will read this, don't worry, understand in detail. In Python list requires nested lists, which can be cumbersome and error prone. Like we have already learned that when we want to create 1D, 2D and 3D list, we need to manually write everything, right? List inside list. And sometimes it becomes error prone. Let's say if we forget a comma, then it might throw an error. So we want to avoid that. So we can use the NumPy array. And in NumPy array, we can straightforward create 1D, 2D and 3D arrays uh, simply faster and conveniently. So that's why we are using NumPy arrays and these are faster, more memory efficient, and you can say overall the best for the numerical operations. So in algo trading, we'll be using it a lot. So you need to have a clear understanding, make sure that. So after this video, just go and perform all the multiple choice questions to clear your concepts. Then please perform all the tasks which I have given in the description, correct? Now let's quickly check the summary. So Python list, flexible with mixed data types, easy to use for non-numerical operations. So when we want to use it for the non-numerical operations, we can use a list, right? But this is slower and less memory efficient for large scale numerical computations. So whenever you have a large data set of any numerical computation, please make sure to use NumPy array only. Next, Python lists require more manual handling for mathematical operations and multidimensional data. Whereas in NumPy arrays, it is designed, it is specifically designed for the uh, numerical computations, right? And it is providing better performance, of course, and a better memory efficiency. And it support extensive mathematical functions and are more suitable for handling large data sets and complex operations common in algo trading. Because it by default have so many built-in functions for complex mathematical operations and mathematical computations. So it becomes absolutely easy like butter to perform the mathematical operations. So that's why. So we can say that using NumPy arrays is typically advantages in algo trading due to their efficiency in numerical computations and ability to handle large data sets seamlessly. So hope it's crystal clear. But if you have any, any doubt, please let me know. Don't keep it to yourself. So we can discuss in further videos, right? So this was the theory, the difference between the Python list and a NumPy array. Now let's quickly move to the examples and let's check it live. Let's start the coding example. So what we'll do here, 
uh, we'll create two lists and two arrays and we will check the time of execution of, of the addition. So we'll add both the arrays and both the list and we'll check that which takes less time and which takes more time. So first of all, let's create two a list. So A is equals to I4 I n a range of 1 million. And similarly, we can create another list and I can just change the name to B and it can range from 1 million to 1 million to 2 million, right? Now we'll create another list, an empty list, which can store the values after addition, right? And also we need to check the time before execution and after execution, right? For that, what we can do, we can import a library that is time and here I can give like start equals to time dot time and yeah now we'll run a for loop here for the addition so uh, for i in uh, length range of len a right because we want to iterate the for loop at the same range as we have the number of items in the list so then what we can do we can just append c dot append and inside that we can give uh, a i plus b i right hope you are able to understand what it will do it will calculate the first element of both the i's and it will append to this list so this list will be created with the values added right so now what i can do i can print the execution time so start minus the current time so let's say time dot time so now when i hit shift enter it says me negative of <laughs> i have to less from this time to start time of course and we are getting 0 0.07 right so <laughs> don't make these kind of mistakes in algo trading right it might cost you or your company a lot of money then Let's check same thing for the NumPy. So in NumPy, it's very simple. Uh, let's create an array with the same name A. And here we can use the A range, right? So NP dot A range. Uh, okay. Actually, we need to import the NumPy library here. So import NumPy. If you want as NP, if you want as PN, you can do whatever you want. Then A is equals to NP dot A range. And here we can give the range. Same like uh, the above. So 1 million. And similarly for the B, I can write A range and it ranges from 1 million to 2 million. And now I'll change it to B, correct? So now what we can do, we can again print the time. So start is equals to time dot time and this. And after that, we can simply add A plus B. And again, we can print the time. So time dot time minus start okay now when we hit shift enter we get the time 0 0.001 the same operation in the list taking 0 0.07 but in numpy it is just taking 0 0.001 and let's say when we increase from 1 million to 10 million let me increase this to 20 million and here also 10 to 20 million now let's check it again so for list shift enter it is taking 0 0.69 seconds and for numpy it is taking 0.07 and let's check how much time it is efficient so when i divide the list time by the numpy array time it gives me 9.18 times it is almost 10 times faster sometimes when you run it again it can give you less time let's see you can see here and this and paste i think second time it stored the cache value so that's why it is giving less time and you can see it is 63 times faster and it becomes a significant number when you have large data sets. So hope we are able to understand why we are using NumPy arrays in algo trading, right? Now we have checked the speed, which is of course faster for the NumPy arrays. Let's check the memory, okay? So what I'll do, I'll just copy and paste the same program here. Here, it is for list and this is for the NumPy, correct? I'll just write here list and i comment it out and this is for numpy okay what we will do we will just remove this we just want to check the size of 
this array only right so for that what we can do we can import another library that is sys which can help in getting the size of the arrays or the list so so now when i check the size of this so get dot get size of and when i give a it is whatever it is okay now let's check for the numpy arrays so if i write sys dot get size of a it is uh, 840112 and which is definitely less than that and let's check how much less so for that what we can do i can just divide the above number with this and so now let's shift enter and it says 1.11 time which is definitely more memory efficient but in numpy you can make it more memory efficient how you can just change this to another data type so what you can do you can just write d type and let's make it integer 32 because by default it is float so sometimes we know that uh, we can just store these values in integer 64 also so and for that you have to write np dot int 32 and now when you check the memory it is just the half right and it becomes earlier it was just 1.11 now it becomes 2.22 times more efficient if you want you can even make it int 8 but sometime if you it is required really then only use that so it becomes eight times more efficient in memory right so that's how so like if your file is of 8 gb it will reduce to 1 gb which is really significant difference you know that right so that's how you can optimize the speed and the memory of the numpy arrays and that's why it is more efficient right and the last is the convenience which we have checked already that in uh, numpy we have a lot of mathematical operations and with the help of just one line of code we can achieve those mathematical results but in list we have to write the whole code to achieve those results so that's how you can compare the list and numpy arrays and which is really really useful so please make sure to understand this uh, thoroughly and attempt all the mcqs and the task questions now let's start with another very important topic that is advanced indexing and broadcasting in previous session we have already learned about the indexing and slicing of 1d 2d and 3d arrays and now we'll start with the advanced indexing this is very interesting and very useful let's quickly revise the normal indexing so what happens in normal indexing we have a 2d array uh, which is of size like 3 by 4 correct and i want to extract this 100.5 so what i'll do i'll just write the first the row number so it is 0 1 2 so it is in the first row 1 and then the column number so 0 1 2 3 and 2 so with this way we will get the value of 105 right and when it comes to the normal slicing how we can achieve that let's say if i want to print out these four values so how i can achieve that first we will check for the rows so it is from 1 to 2 so i'll just write 1 and give a comma so it will print out both the rows then for the column so it is 1 to 2 so we know that 1 is including and this is excluded so it will just print 1 and 2 correct so with the help of this slicing we'll be able to print these four values so this is the normal indexing but now let's perform the same operations with the advanced indexing so for the same value let's try with the advanced indexing so for that what we can do first we check for the rows so in rows i want to print one and two right zero one two so in that i want to print just one and two so i can just write like this so at the place of row i'll just pass a list of rows so it will be one and two correct so this is for row make sure these are for the rows then i'll give a comma here and now let's check for the column so i want just one and two column so i will again pass a list after the comma one and two so with the help of this index or we can say advanced indexing we can get the same results this becomes convenient because sometimes we are not able to find the values with normal indexing we cannot find the normal slicing so let me give you an example let's say i want to print these two value and let me take this these two values and also these values okay these two value and this one value 
I want to print. Uh, sorry, both are one one. Like the column number zero and column number three. Correct. I want to print these four values. So this we cannot achieve with the normal slicing. Even if we give the step size, we will not be able to achieve that. In that case, we can use the advanced indexing. So for this, how we can get this result? First, we'll check for the rows. So we know that row number zero is not needed. One and two needed. So we'll pass a list of rows. So zero is ignored, then one and two. Correct. Then I'll give a comma here. And now we'll pass a list for the column. So in that, we know that we need only zero and three. So I'll just write zero and three. And that's how simple it is. And as we discussed already, previously we have learned the normal slicing and the name of this slicing is the fancy slicing. Just for remembering, you can call it fancy slicing. Okay. Similarly, we have one more slicing that is known as the Boolean slicing. You know the value of a Boolean, the true and false. That's it. So how we can use this? So far we have learned normal indexing or slicing. Then we have learned the fancy indexing and slicing. And now the last one is Boolean indexing and slicing. So how we can do that? So in Boolean, we know that we have true and false values. So, so let's say from this array, I want only values which are greater than 201.0. Okay. So that cannot be achieved with normal slicing, normal indexing, fancy slicing, fancy indexing. We cannot achieve that. It becomes very difficult. So now comes the Boolean slicing and Boolean indexing. So let's use that. So what I will do, and we know that the name of this array is OHLC data day two. Okay. So instead of it, I'll just write OHLC2 just to make it shorter. OHLC2, right? So what I'll write here, a conditional statement that that OHLC2 is greater than 201. Okay, we'll take this value that whatever the value greater than 2010 will be printed out. So when we apply this, we will get an array of only true and false values. Instead of these values, we'll get true and false. So, so in this case, what we will get? We know that 201 is at only one place, right? This place, except uh, here also we have 201. Here also we have, so what we will get the output? We'll get all the false, here also false, 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 but here it will be true because we have 201. Again, here also it will be true and rest will be false. So false, false and false, false. Here we have true, so I'll just write true here. This is the result we will get, but now, we want the values for that. What we can do, I can just make it a mask and I can pass this here, OHLC. That's it. When I write like this, instead of these values, I will get only these three values. These three values get printed out in a 1D array and I will get result like this 201.0, then comma again 201.0 and 201.0. We'll just check these in uh, code, don't worry. For now, just understand the three very important things: Normal slicing and indexing, fancy slicing and indexing, and then Boolean slicing and indexing. So that's very easy and becomes more convenient. And you will be using these in the pandas more compared to the NumPy. So you have to have a good understanding of these three types of indexing and slicing, right? Now let's move to one of the most confusing part of NumPy, that is broadcasting. Actually, it is very easy, but it becomes sometimes confusing. So if you have a visual understanding, so when you're performing these codes, it will become so easy for you to understand. So let's understand what is broadcasting. So broadcasting is a powerful feature in NumPy that allows arrays of different shapes to be used together in arithmetic operations. Broadcasting eliminates the need for explicitly reshaping arrays or using loops to perform element-wise operation on arrays of different sizes. Right. So let me give you an example of that. So, okay, we take the same example, which we have used earlier. So what I will do, I'll just remove all these. Now let's understand the broadcasting with the help of these examples. So we know that the dimension of this array is three by four. Correct. Three rows and four columns. Zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three, three by four. Similarly, the dimension of this array is also three by four. So let's say if I consider this as OHLC one 
and this as OHLC2. And if I try to add these both the arrays, so I can just write simply OHLC1 plus OHLC2 and it will give me a result which will be having the arrays with the values like this will get added to this and this will get added to this and we'll, we'll get a result like this 300 and so on and so forth. Correct. It will add the elements of the same position, right? But if I make the dimension of this array as let's say I'll add another row here, right? And I'll give some values, random values, let's say 201.9, 201.8, 201.0, 0, 201.0. So now it becomes an array of this size 4 by 4. And now if you try to add this, it will throw an error because while adding, we need to have few conditions and that is known as the broadcasting. So let me tell you the conditions. What are the conditions? The first condition is that if the arrays do not have the same number of dimensions, prepend ones to the shape of the smaller array until they match. So let's say we have two arrays. So one array is two by four and another array we have is only four. So this is 2D array and this is 1D array. So first rule says we need to make this as 2D, right? What I'll do, I'll just add one or I'll prepend one. So I'll make it as one by four. Now it becomes 2D and we can add both these values easily. That's the first rule. And let's say, let's take another example of 3D array. Let's say we have an array with the size two, two, four. This is 3D. And we have another array with only like 1D array. So with the first rule, what we can do, we can just make it as 3D array by prepending one, right? So what I will write one, one, four, and then we can add both these, right? The first rule says, if the arrays do not have the same number of dimensions, prepend ones to the shape of the smaller array until they match, right? Then the second step is two dimensions are compatible when they are equal or one of them is one. So what is the second condition of adding two arrays? The first condition is that they should be equal. If Let's say I have A equals to one by four and B equals to one by four. It's fine because both are equal. We can add both the arrays. But if I have A is one by four and B is two by four, still we can add because one of them is one. And let's take a few more examples to make it more clear. Let's say I have another array and the dimension of that is, let's say two by four and B we have is three by four. Now what is happening? Neither they are equal. Both are different. Neither they have one in any one of them. So we cannot add this. It will not add it and it will throw an value error. Now let's understand the same with this visual. So what is happening here? We have one array and the shape of this array is one by three, right? One by three. And the shape of this is currently one by one, right? So the condition is matching here because one of them is one. Here also we have one, here also we have one, so we can add this. And so in broadcasting, whenever we have one value, so we can just stretch that like this, like we have this five. So I'll just stretch it and I'll make it one by three. We will just understand this all in the coding. Don't worry. So now it becomes one by three and one by three, and we can add both these. Similarly, let's say we have this three by three, a 2D array, three by three. And here it is only one by three. Correct. So earlier we stretched from here to here, this side. Now we can stretch this hole like this. So first we check the basic condition, whether both are equal, we can say it is not equal. Whether any one of them has one, yes, it is. A, it has one means we can add that and we can just simply stretch. So when we stretch zero, one, two, it will become a three by three and we can add this now. The last example we have this as three by one, correct? And this is one by three. Again, the first condition is whether they are equal. No, they are not equal. Second condition is that whether any one of them has one. Yes, both of them have has one in common. So we can stretch both the values. So first we'll stretch this. So it will become three by three and it will become also three by three. And we can simply add them like this. So now let's proceed and solve some examples to get more clarity.
Okay, let's quickly start the examples of advanced indexing and uh, broadcasting. So what I'll do, I'll just copy and paste the arrays from the previous example. Yeah, we have two data. Let's make it just OHLC1 and this as OHLC2, right? So when I hit shift enter, okay, now let me show you quickly how the normal indexing and slicing works. So for example, if I want to print this 100.5, what I will do, I will just shift enter and here I'll write OHLC1 and first I will check the row. So this is 0, 1 and column is 0, 1, 2. So I will just write 1 and 2 and we will get 100.5. And if I want to get all these four values, so for that also I will check the row number. So I just want the row number 1 and 2. So here I'll write 1 to 2 and then actually one to leave it blank so it will take all the rows then also from here it's zero one two three so from two column just leave it blank and it will give you all these four values that is the normal slicing and indexing but now let's go for the fancy indexing right so i'll go here and let's take the same example if i want to print this 100.5 so what i can do i can write like ohlc and Inside that, we have to give another list. And now the row number that is 0, 1. So I'll give just 1. And then I'll give a comma. And again, I'll pass a list and we'll provide the column number. So that is 0, 1, 2. So only 2. So I'll give here 2 and hit Shift Enter and we'll get the value 100.5. Now let's achieve the same result of this with the help of fancy index. So what I can do, I can write OHLC1, then we know that we want these two values, right? These two values. So we'll start from the row one to last row. So for the rows, I'll just give a simple one. And then for the columns, I can give from zero, one, two, three. So I want two and three. So I'll just write two comma three, a list of columns. And when we hit shift enter, we get the same value, right? So that's how you can achieve fancy indexing. And this becomes also very useful sometimes. And let me show you when it becomes useful. Let's say I want only these two value. Okay. And these last two values. So if I try to achieve with the slicing, I cannot give step size or even I cannot perform with the slicing this, right? I can get this value and this value easily. But when I want this and the last one, the zero and four, it becomes difficult. So with the help of fancy indexing, let's, let's try to uh, achieve this. So uh, what I'll do, I'll add another cell here and OHLC, this is two, right? And I want the first one. So the row zero and four. So I will just give a list of zero and four, then a comma. And now I can give the column number. So I want the column one and two, right? So I will write here one and three and it says index four is zero one. Okay. It will be three here for sure. And you can see that we have two one zero point five, which is this one, then two nine nine point five we have then last two zero three and two zero one. So that's how you can achieve this. And this is really useful and very powerful. Please make sure to practice as much as you can this. And it will be very helpful when you perform the algo trading operations. Right now, let's quickly move to the next, which is Boolean indexing. And I'll copy and paste the same example here also. Boolean means true and false, right? So let's say uh, I'll add another cell here. And let's say if I write, I want OHLC, the values were should be greater than 102. And when I hit shift enter, I get a Boolean array false 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 and i know that only these two values these three values true true and true this one this is greater than 102 and this is also greater than 102 means only three values we have which is greater than 102 so now i want only these three values the true values so what i can do i can use this as a mask this condition as a mask so i'll enclose this in a bracket and i'll again write ohlc1 and when i shift enter we get only these three values so it becomes really very, very powerful to perform on a large data sets and you can easily extract any value.
right so you have to practice this a lot and once you are done with that you will never forget it again and it will become very easy for you while performing any operation in algo trading right let's check another conditions let's say if i want values from this ohlc2 and those values are greater than 202 so i will write here greater than 202 right from ohlc2 so first we will write the condition here ohlc2 and greater than 202 right and now when i hit shift enter it will give me the boolean array but i only want these value true true and these four and five trues so for that we need to use this as a mask so i will mask it and i will write again ohlc2 and it will give me only these values the true values in a 1d array correct similarly we can achieve the even numbers so we know the condition for even number that ohlc1 modulo 2 should be equal to 0 correct so when i hit shift enter it gives me all the values are false and if i write 0, 0.0 then also means in ohlc1 there is not a single value which is even but let's check in ohlc2 we have one value as true and we can find that with the mask so ohlc2 and these two values are even so it becomes easier yeah next find all the numbers like we can write anything here and you can perform as per your condition right we can even uh, like combine two conditions let's say i want a value which is greater than 202 and which is even also so what what we do we'll make few more values as even in this 206 so from this array i want values which are even and which should be greater than 202 okay so we have the first condition already right and then the next condition what we can have is i'll just enclose this in a bracket and i'll apply and here and ohlc should be greater than 202 right and actually i'll remove this from here and i'll add here and when i hit shift enter it says bitwise and not supported for the input types okay you need to make sure that all brackets are correct and this also i will keep in this it gives an empty array means there is no value which is like both the conditions apply for that let's check it should be actually even and let's first check for this we have two even and if we check 202 right okay we have to run this also ohlc2 yeah now if you try this you will get two values which are greater than 204 202 and and also even right so you can have like multiple conditions here as as much as you want and you can like play with it and practice right okay now we have broadcasting which we have already understood in the uh, theory part but let's again read some rules here so the term broadcasting describes how numpy treats arrays with different shapes during arithmetic operations the smaller array is broadcast across the larger array so that they have compatible shapes so what we will do we'll copy and paste this again here and let's try to understand the broadcasting here in detail so so first we take the same shape so here i will remove this and remove this comma so it becomes a same shape because 3 by 4 3 by 4 or when we hit shift enter and when i try to add this uh, ohlc1 plus ohlc2 and hit shift enter and you will get an array with the values added this 101 will be added with 200 the same position will be added to same place right but if i add another row here let's copy and paste this here and we'll make it a different shape and i'll add a comma here and so now it becomes three by four the ohlc one and second becomes four by four right so when i had shift enter here it throws an error which says operands could not be broadcast together with shapes three by four and four by four so that's the issue so in order to achieve that we have few rules of broadcasting and if those rules apply only then we can perform the broadcasting here so the first rule is make the two arrays have the same number of dimension right here both the arrays have 2d so there is no issue in that right 2d means 
the condition satisfies. But the second condition should also be satisfied, which is make each dimension of the two arrays the same size. Now we know that the size of this is three by four and the size of this is four by four, which is not equal. So if the size of each dimension of the two arrays do not match, dimensions with size one are stretched to the size of the other array. We know that in both these, neither of them have one because this is three by four, this is four by four means this condition doesn't satisfy. Second is, if there is a dimension whose size is not one in either of the two areas, it cannot be broadcasted and an error is raised. So let's say I'll copy and paste this below here and let's try this. This says if the dimension is not one, so let's make it any one of them as dimension one. So for that, I can remove all these and now it becomes one by uh, one, two, three, one by four means this is three by four. This is one by four. And when we try this, it will get added, right? How this is happening. You can see this example here. It, it is one by three. So we have to stretch this like this. If you worked in Excel, we can just clip one cell and we can stretch this multiple times. Similarly here also, it was one by four. So I just hold it here and I stretch up to the, to match the dimension of this first array. So here it was three by four, it, it was one by four. So I stretched it to three by four. Means the same value will be here. The same values will be here. Means it is not showing us, but the results are same. If I paste it here, when I shift enter, you, you can see that the results will be exactly same. See, correct. So even if I remove this, it will be exactly same. You can check it is 300.1 and last is 303.5. And when I shift enter, it is exactly the same. So means internally, the broadcasting feature is extending, is stretching this single array and making it compatible. For that, these conditions should match. Either of them should have one. And if dimension is not equal, we have to make, make them equal, right? Okay, let's take a few more examples of broadcasting. So what we will do, I'll just copy and paste this. Okay, let's take some something different. So what I'll do, I'll create an array. Uh, a is equals to np dot a range and 12 and reshape reshape into 3 by 4 correct and I can even print this and again I'll create another array and it can be uh, 12 and I'll make it 4 by 3 and let's make it b b and this also be now we know that this array is three by four and this array is four by three so if we try to add this a plus b it will not get added why because dimensions are equal both are 2d but the size is not equal and there is no one this is three by four this is four by three so it will not work so to make it work what we can do uh, i can just make it like four and this one and four now we have one right so when i shift enter and here also shift enter and now when i try to add it will get added right the rule is simple first what is happening here it was only one dimension right so what this python did internally it just stretched this to three rows it added this virtual three rows more of zero one two three same actually we have done that already right previously so internally you can think that it is stretching that it is holding from here, it will stretch up to three rows and it will make the same size and then it will add. So in NumPy we have seen that we have multiple mathematical uh, functions and we can perform all those functions very easily, very quickly with a very small line of code. So let's say we have this, let's take the same example here again. So I'll paste here and I want all the sign values of this value. So what I'll do, I'll just write NP sign and OHLC one and hit shift enter. So it will give us all the sign values. Whereas if I wanted to do in some other function like list or something else, we had to write a whole program, a whole function for that. Right? But here with just a simple one line of code, we can perform that. Correct. And let's check very popular function, which is a sigmoid. It, it will be very useful for you when we learn machine learning or AI. So what is sigmoid? So let me show you a formula for this. 
and let's let's convert any formula into a numpy it's very easy so let's say you can see the formula for sigmoid here sigmoid of x is 1 over 1 plus exponential uh, minus x right so now we need to convert this to a sigmoid function in numpy it's very easy you can convert any mathematical formula to into numpy so let's do this 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus x so and let's open again so let's calculate the sigmoid for this second one this ohlc2 so how we can do that i'll just write the formula is 1 over 1 plus uh, let's enclose this in a bracket 1 plus np dot exponential right and inside that so negative of ohlc2 correct so when you hit shift enter you will get the sigmoid of this one it, it's very easy actually and you can also calculate for one it is like it will give the value of all the uh, it is from like 0 to 1 the sigmoid is so it will give the value of one like it will generally use to normalize some uh, values which are higher we will learn this also don't worry for now just understand that we can convert any complex mathematical formula to the code of the python code right and it's really become useful and with the help of this we can perform many complex things and you will see that in future now we have mean squared error right let's take this example only here let's check uh, the formula of this so i'll just open google so the formula for mean squared error is this and let's try to convert this into the python code so we'll go to the visual code studio and i will open this and let's try this so what we are doing here we are assuming this as the actual actual value and this is the predicted value so means what happens in generally when we create some models the prediction from the model so we need to find the error right that is known as the mean squared error so how we can achieve that i'll define a function and let's say define mean squared error and inside that i'll pass both the values as an uh, parameter so ohlc1 that is the actual value and ohlc2 that is the predicted value right and that will return as return mean of actual value that is ohlc1 minus ohlc2 and squared correct all in the a bracket and now we can call this function so mse and ohlc1 and ohlc so when you shift enter this it says operands could not be broadcasted together with these shapes because the shape is different and uh, we can just make it same shape now you hit shift enter and you will get the mean squared error that is way beyond the limits but you get my point right what i'm trying to say with the help of numpy you can convert any mathematical formula to the python code now we have is the working with missing values so actually in algo trading you will be dealing with a lot of missing values because when you fetch some price data from any any source then there is possibility there is high possibility that some values are missing and if you directly apply that data set to your program it might throw an error so in order to resolve that issue we have to deal with the missing values and this dealing with missing value is very significant process in the algo trading or you can say data science right so how we can deal with the missing values so what we will do i'll just copy and paste the same code here let's take this the first array ohlc1 and i'll paste here now let's make few values as none values so what i'll do i'll write uh, np dot uh, nan and i can also make this value as np dot nan and this happens in reality because whenever you fetch some data there is high possibility of none values and we had to deal with those uh, efficiently so now in this array let's say we have fetched a data set which is very very large let's say 10 years of data of one minute time frame right so inside that we cannot manually check every day right every minute time frame that which is missing we can just apply these kind of uh, functions of numpy and pandas to handle with those none values so uh, let me print this uh, ohlc one and you can see that we have these nn values correct now what i will do i'll use np dot is nan is nan and inside that i can pass ohlc1 
So when I hit shift enter, it will give me the Boolean results, the true and false. So wherever it has the none values, it will give us the true result. But what we want, we want to remove the none values. So I can just give the, the bitwise not op uh, operator here. So when I do that, it will reverse the value. So these none value will become false. And in order to get these value, what we can do, we have already learned recently that we can make it as a mask, right? And now I can write OHLC1 and shift enter. And now you can see that we have removed all the NN values, right? And now when I shift enter, you can see that we have removed all the NN values. So it is really very useful. Just practice few questions and you will be good to go. Okay.